This expansive derelict complex along the Suffolk coastline dates back to a nearby chain home radar station from 1936. In the 1950s, it was extended to include a road to radar complex consisting of an extensive underground control bunker and an above ground site. The rotor system was designed for air defence to counter Soviet bombers in the Cold War, which may have been carrying nuclear weapons to drop on the UK. After a hiatus, the base was reopened in August 1979 as a Bloodhound surface-to-air missile site. We began our exploration at the main entrance area, looking at what looked like an old vehicle garage containing electrical fittings and patches of graffiti. This was an MT shed, and this stands for either motor or mechanical transport, most likely. To the back of this entrance yard is a store, and in the centre stands a seemingly domestic bungalow style guardhouse. Under this unsuspecting entrance lies a huge nuclear bunker where the command centre was based, although due to time we didn't check this out. There was plenty more to see on the surface, and anyway, there's loads of pictures of the bunker online, so go and have a look at them. Structures of different constructions and eras were scattered throughout the site all abandoned. Street lamps and barbed wire fences encircled what would have once been at the cutting edge of national defence. So it might be lifted this site, this whole bit. We then came to the launch pads for 12 huge Bloodhound surface-to-air missiles. Whilst these were brought to the site in 1979, the missile technology was developed in the 1950s to replace heavy anti-aircraft gun batteries used in World War II and earlier in the Cold War. Here's an artist's impression of one of the missiles on the site. Bloodhound missiles were in service right up until 1991 with the end of the Cold War. If you haven't seen us explore any anti-aircraft gun batteries from World War II, which predated the Cold War missile system, go and have a look at these as we've got a whole playlist on them on our YouTube. Here you can see two air vents for the underground bunker. Their huge size only suggests how big the bunker below is. The site is situated in a hill close to the coast and offered amazing views out to the River Debden.
The next area of the complex we reached appeared to be that of a radar system, consisting of a plinth for the transmitter to the left and two adjacent buildings. This shed was for a generator. The building to the right was a missile section office. This radar plinth once mounted a Type 87 target illuminating radar dish consisting of a large metal radar dish and receiver. In the 80s it was replaced with a Type 86 radar caravan. The site was equipped with numerous radars for aircraft detection, including a truly enormous Ames Type 80 radar, which was codenamed the funny name of Green Garlic. However, this building was demolished in 1977. From the hill, we looked back over the site, and the guardhouse to the left and the MT shed stood to the right. We then headed to an enormous area of blast walls, which can only be presumed to have been designed to contain an accidental explosion. This suggests that Bloodhound missiles would have been stored within these ready-use bays. Cool. 
This bay had an explosive fitment shed inside, maybe for arming the missiles. Last building we had a look at was this odd looking building painted in a classic 1950s style military green. Please do let us know what this building was used for and when it was built. You can hear things moving in the wind like, all the time. This is Suffolk's abandoned Cold War air defence missile base and radar complex. Its future is uncertain and it continues to decay despite having been at the forefront of the country's nuclear defence as recently as 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> 